workshop this way and having you actually make the foldables is because we've done about 12 foldable workshops now. And we have had some individuals come and say, but there's not a 12th grade foldable for physics for my second block class. What we really want to show you is you're the editors and the authors of foldables. We want to show you how to do the folds. We can show you a lot of resources that are ready made, but we want you to experience the folds. Imagine how it would be if your students were doing the folds, and then you're going to keep sort of a journal. You're going to do the fold and you're going to think, oh, you know what, this would be the perfect fold to show the three um, properties of matter. And that then, so you can just take some notes and put them in your notebook. After we've gone through the folds, we are going to um, show you a very, very large resource file. The resource file will contain foldable templates. It will contain um, websites and links to other websites and links devoted to foldables. It will also give you um, a number of ideas um, across the, um, the grade levels and across the um, domains. So you can figure out, you can find foldables for science, or you can find some foldables for bullying. So um, we want you to bear with us. It's hot in here. We want to make sure that you have a notebook to journal in and to glue your foldables in. We want to make sure you have at least some access to some colored paper so you can fold the folds. You need some scissors and some glue sticks, and we'll get started. Does everybody, does anybody need anything? Yes? I like your writing. Pardon? Oh. Okay. Here. I got one. Okay. So we're going to go right ahead and get started. Okay, what are foldables? The copyrighted name foldables comes from Dynazikes. They're multidimensional graphic organizers that can be used at any level, at any subject. And we really want to send that home with you. It's not the, we're going to show you the 12th grade block physics foldable. We're going to show you the possibilities. And then you use your imagination to take it from there. Why do we use them? Well, we can use them to introduce a lesson. They can be a graphic organizer. The most important part and the, the most important role that we see foldables is differentiation of instruction. My background is occupational therapy, and my kids need to fidget. They need to have things that they can flip and fidget and fold and work with. And foldables can answer that need. And there have been a lot of studies done, and I know you've sat through a lot of workshops, about how some people learn by moving. Some people learn by folding. Some per people learn by saying it out loud to themselves. And we want to make sure that you all have the opportunity to consider foldables as one of those ways of differentiating instruction. We have another Vanna that just entered. This is Karen. Karen is also going to support us with this workshop today. So just quick housekeeping, foldables. You don't always have to have a foldable for each student. Some teachers choose to make a foldable bulletin board. We've got some samples of foldable bulletin boards here. Um, some people um, choose to make um, a foldable as a center, where they'll have a series of foldables. And we just want to chat with you a little bit, because these can become bulky and um, a little bit overwhelming. So one of the ways that you can store your foldables when you don't use them is to turn a one-gallon freezer bag into a student portfolio and storage container. container. Basically, if you cut off just a teeny tiny corner of the bottom of the bag, you can get the air out of it so it's not this big puffy thing in your filing cabinet. Then you can flatten down the foldables and you can store them. So if you want to revisit um, the, the attributes of matter every year in third grade, you can pop your foldable example into that, um, that gallon bag and store it in your um, in your um, file folder. In fact, one of the um, ideas at one of our foldables workshops um, this summer during staff development was to even put a tab on this notebook and label the tab foldable so it sticks up. So when you shove even your notebook in your um, filing cabinet, you know where to find it because you know darn well if it's shoved like this, you don't know which notebook is which. So you can consider doing that with your scraps of paper as we proceed. Okay, we're going to begin with the basics. So we're going to model a hamburger fold. You need to grab one of your pieces of paper. Everybody show me portrait. I'm holding it up like a portrait. Now show me landscape. And don't laugh. We have been in classes where people don't, don't know this, so that's why we start with the basics. And the reason we use the terminology is a lot of the directions that you will find for foldables in your resources will say, make a hamburger fold, make a hot dog fold, make a burrito fold. This gets you started so you know what you're doing. So basically a hamburger fold, whether
whether you start from the top or whether you start from the side, is making a fat fold, not a skinny fold. A fat fold. Done. This is a hamburger fold. It doesn't matter if it's this way or this way. As a suggestion, so that you go home with something that you can touch and feel and look at, is that we're going to have you glue these into your notebooks and label them however you want. And as you're going through and putting these in, you may want to jot down a note. Wow, a hamburger fold would be something great to, I don't know, talk about colors or something, whatever it is that may affect you. Take those notes in here as you're going forward. We found that after six classes of this, this summer, during PD days, the people really walked away with some great ideas. And to get your engines running a little bit, you could have a whole series of hamburger folds on a bulletin board with a riddle question on the top, flip it open, there's the answer. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what grade level, it's just a hamburger fold used as a quiz vehicle. Okay. We're going to push it through a little bit fast, but we have all the folds up there. Um, so if you have to go through a little bit fast and you don't catch them all, they're labeled back there. Um, so the next fold is going to be the... Sorry. That's okay, Vanna. The hot dog fold. Again, doesn't matter if you're in portrait or landscape, you're going to fold it skinny. Be patient with us. It seems like it's very elementary, but there's a whole point to this. So here's your nice skinny hot dog fold. It can be used this way or this way.